Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Non-Commissioned News. I'm Jamie Goldstein, and these are the military matters that matter to us. We talk pretty frequently about the dangers of poor mental health, but there's a much less common, yet just as dangerous threat out there. Bears. No, not those bears. A soldier training at Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson in Alaska was attacked and killed by a goddamn bear. The Army released a modest statement, but refused to answer any additional questions. Like, was the soldier given proper safety equipment? A packing list for the unit revealed a noticeable absence of any mention of bear spray, and some feared that this is another tragedy that could have been avoided had certain corners not been cut. Hopefully, this soldier's family gets answers and closure after this horrible accident. In addition to providing food for the local wildlife, the Army has also been busy renaming many of its most prominent bases. Facilities named after Confederate soldiers are getting rebranded, a change that has been heralded as long overdue and also criticized as a meaningless gesture and an example of cancel culture. The Naming Commission has identified over 700 names to be removed from federal lands, a volume of Confederate cancellations unseen since General Sherman's fun little backpacking trip through Atlanta. Critics have pointed out how needlessly expensive the move is, and for some bases, like Fort Bragg, the huge economic and cultural connections to their surrounding communities would create expensive adjustments for their civilian partners as well. <laughs> it's almost like the Army maybe shouldn't have named a bunch of bases after fighting for slavers in the first place. But what's done is done, and it's way easier to change a sign than do something meaningful like, you know, actually root out racism in the ranks. Other branches are following the Army's move and flagging pieces of military property with ties to Confederate names. But no word yet on whether or not the Navy will be rebranding its controversial Mississippi-class aircraft carrier, the USS N-Word Jim. <laughs> Commanding officers can be amazing or anything in between. But Vietnam veteran Ed Eaton's commander must have been an awesome dude, because this brave mother nearly died for him. Eaton joined the Army while the, with the hopes of being a combat medic. However, the Army wanted Eaton to be a radio operator in the infantry. So they compromised, and Eaton became a radio operator in the infantry. Soon, Ed Eaton found himself in Vietnam, operating out of the Mekong Delta. His CO, Captain Mike Perkins, asked for volunteers to recon a Vietnamese village. Sergeant Eaton went along, and holy sh**, Perkins lucky he did. Upon first inspection, the village seemed normal. And then they found the door to the tunnels. Perkins knew a bloodbath was right around the corner, and he ordered his guys to get out. But it was a little too late. Enemy fighters flooded out of the tunnels and attacked them as they tried to exfil via helicopter. They almost got out of Dodge as well, but a well-placed Viet Cong bullet rendered Perkins' chopper inoperable, and it dropped hard back to the ground. Eaton was the only one uninjured in the crash, so in a move that sounds too action movie-esque to be believable, he jumped on top of the bird and started stacking bodies from there. Wounded soldiers inside started tossing their weapons up to him as he cycled through ammo, turning Viet Cong assailants into pink mist. He held off the enemy so effectively that another helicopter had time to get in there. They extracted all of the wounded, except Captain Perkins, who was too injured to move. Eaton yelled, I won't leave the old man to die alone, and kept fighting. Perkins, while severely injured, probably thought to himself, dude, how old do you think I am? <laughs> I'm 37, I'm not old. Eaton continued to fight until Huey was able to extract both him and his CO. Both men were heavily injured and heavily lucky to be alive. Perkins would spend the rest of his career lobbying to have Eaton's Bronze Star upgraded to a Medal of Honor, continuing to prove that some commanding officers are worth catching an ass full of shrapnel for. <laughs> Speaking of horrific violence, a military housing company confronted with accusations of unsafe conditions recently gave Congress the most obvious update imaginable and reportedly said, we're not perfect. Last December, Balfour Beatty pleaded guilty to major fraud against the United States, ordered to pay more than $65 million in fines and restitution. The company, Balfour Beatty Communities, manages more than 43,000 military homes in 26 different states and was the subject of a newly released eight-month investigation by Senate Homeland Security and a government affairs panel. The investigation found that Balfour was providing poor living conditions. This after 
Another scandal in 2019 involving squalid family housing, and another scandal last year where the company pled guilty to falsifying maintenance records. But hey, no one's perfect, right? The full quote comes from Richard Taylor, the company's president. Why should we believe, Mr. Taylor, that a company that engaged in major fraud against the United States is fixing this? I reject the suggestion that it's a systemic failure. Things go wrong. We don't always get it right the first time. We're not perfect. This was amid other testimony from various service members detailing their efforts to try to get their dangerous homes fixed and the effects that the detrimental living conditions had on their families and their children. I know Uncle Sam hires the lowest bidder, but give me a f break. And which congressional representative's genitals are they filleting and or cunnling to still have a f contract? Military housing has got to be the only industry where you can get hired to provide a service, actively try to harm the ones you're providing service to, cover it up, get caught multiple times, and still have a job. Unbelievable. So don't forget, if you live on post and you're watching this, you're welcome. That being said, if you live on post, you might not be for longer because the United States military is shrinking. The Pentagon wants to cut numbers by the thousands. A few thousand in the Army, Navy, and Air Force specifically. If you're in the Marines, you might be unaffected as their numbers will remain the same, if not get a small bump. And if you're in the Space Force, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I got, I got nothing. I still can't believe you guys are real. <laughs> anyway, the lowering of numbers comes at the request of the Army and Navy as they struggle to meet recruitment goals. Comptroller Michael McCord blames the downgrade in troop numbers on, quote, the low unemployment rate right now and the declining propensity to serve, which he cites as making it impossible for branches to meet previously set recruitment numbers. We can extrapolate two things from this. One, the Army still thinks that lowering standards is the solution when they have trouble meeting them. And two, the Army has to rely on a shitty economic system to attract recruits. Look, the fact that you're banking on a dog economy and a lack of options to drive people through your doors might be half the reason that you're having trouble filling seats Okay, Roger, solid copy. At least you admit it. Economic prosperity becoming a national security issue aside, if you're looking at Russia and China right now and thinking this might not be the best time to shrink our forces, then you're not alone. Army Chief of Staff General James McConville said in April of last year, quote, when I take a look at what historically we need, and now that we're in a time of great power competition, I'm very, very concerned about the size of the Army. Now, as someone who enjoys not speaking Mandarin, I can certainly see the concern. But it's not just that recruitment quotas will be lowered. This new troop requirement will spark a downgrade in numbers that affects those of you still serving. Historically, we've seen these downgrade efforts involve incentivizing personnel to get out by basically treating them like shit, even more so than usual. Whether that's the lowering of re-enlistment bonuses, holding back promotions, or the Air Force removing all of the ice cream machines from their chow halls. My point is, because the dinosaurs with stars on their collar can't figure out how to get the Pokemon Go generation to want to serve their country, the buck is going to fall where it always does, on you. So if you're still in, try to secure that bonus now or put feelers out into the private sector. Because unfortunately, you might find yourself soon to be more useless than a Peck 15 on a Pogues rifle. What's going on, guys? If you like that, click this link here to watch more. If you're ready to subscribe and keep us in business, click on this link here. And you know the Selective Service is coming back. <laughs> I don't want to keep my day job, so subscribe.